In this video, I'll be chatting with one of the most prolific book cover artists on planet Earth, and his name is Christian Bentelan. We discuss the techniques used in this piece and the trials and tribulations of creating a full-time art career. Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name is Dean Samet, I'm a pro horror artist from the UK, and you're tuned in to photomanipulation.com. If you're new here, welcome. We're not your typical Photoshop channel, we specialise in photo manipulation, digital art, and advanced Photoshop techniques. If that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to like and subscribe as we put out new videos Monday to Friday. It's free, easy and really supports the channel. Let's roll the video, enjoy. So how are you doing today Christian? Hello bro, uh, I'm doing great, how about you? Yeah, not too bad thank you, surviving. Um, for the audience, can you tell us please what you do uh, professionally in the art world and how you got into it, please? First of all, uh, I want to say thank you uh, for having me here. I'm, I'm Christian and I'm a book cover artist. Before I got here, uh, I was into music and then suddenly I realized at the end that I love the art uh, route most, the most. <laughs> Okay, so, so you had yeah. an interest in music, and then you thought, "Ah, oh, art is where my my real passion is." Yep, where the where the money is. <laughs> ah, okay, I hear you. And um, so you're working on a piece today, uh, a haunted house, I gather. Um, is, is this a personal piece, or is this one of your commissions? This artwork is uh, technically I put this uh as a personal artwork, and. I think I've offered this on my page as a pre-made, but I think it's not the right time to sell it for now. <laughs> okay, so this is a piece done for experimentation and fun. You you just felt like doing a haunted house on this day. Yep, it is correct. Oh, that's brilliant. And how many years would you say you've been a, a book cover artist for? As far as I remember, I think I, I've been doing this for four to five years. Four to five years. And from what I gather, you started off on a website called 99designs. Is that correct? Yep, that is correct. And can you tell me how you got on in that? On how I've never used 99designs for my own work. I've always been a little bit critical of it. Can you tell me what your experiences were like on that website, trying to make a name as a, as a professional freelance artist? Uh, sure, bro. Uh, 99 Design is a website that where uh, where you can you can compete. I mean, uh, you can submit your artworks and then please the clients. And your the competition is actually all over the world because there are a lot of designers doing the artwork for this job. Okay. Yep. And the, and when and when a client picks you, that's the time that you'll you'll earn. So I've been competing for one year on 99 Designs, but I never won something. You was on 99 <laughs> Designs for an entire year and didn't win a single contract. I didn't, but I think it served me as a training ground. Okay, so you was going up against some people that were, were very good at what they do? It is. Uh, in fact, some of the designers that I work with are a lot more professional than i am right now oh wow so so what would you say to the people listening to this video or watching this video if they were interested in getting into freelance artwork like you do um would you advise to check out a website like that to, to practice or would you say it's not a good experience what would you say to the viewers today oh uh what i can say is we we have a lot of we have different fates so what i think is Maybe they can try. They can try the, the their luck because it's it it is always depends on the client whoever he wants to to uh, I mean you pick with. So when I started uh, submitting designs, sometimes the order picks the uh, what I can say is not the most beautiful one. Yep, I okay. I get that. Yeah, it's very random. So what I can say is they can try it. Maybe the, uh, the luck. Is and, and give it a go yeah. and see what happens. So yep. if you didn't win any contracts on 99 Designs, how did you go from that to becoming one of the most prolific book cover artists on planet Earth? All right. Um, after that, after a year, I think 
let's say one and a half years on 99 designs yep. i met this person uh shana festa one of the clients on the on on that site okay uh the funny thing is that concept was a hundred house as oh, well yeah so you're getting back to your roots today yeah as you can see on the, on the video yeah i'm doing a hundred house personal artwork so when i met this person he had she had this uh contest that calls uh time of death okay yep uh Oh, I actually remember of, that piece. I remember that book cover. Uh, all right. And then, out of luck, I won. I never expected about it. And then, uh, she is a very, very, very kind person. Because after I won, she never forgets me. Actually, she's the one who, who led me into the indie industry. I didn't know that there's a lot of indie authors on the face on Facebook. Yep. So, she int introduced me to every, every groups every pages oh that is every, very very kind. every person yes including you bro i should remember <laughs> yep yep i i remember um what was it called back then i think it was called art system photoshop i sent you a copy didn't i way back yep, then you did and um and and to see how far you've come and the volume of work that you get in and the the profile that you've achieved is amazing in that short amount of time it really is. Thank right. you so much. What I'm going to be asking now is, is a, a couple of bits here. Um, I, I see you've got a curves adjustment layer in your layer stack, but you have a levels um, adjustment layer as well. So why a, a curves one higher up and then why the levels one layer down? Can you explain that to me, please? Sure, bro. Uh, first of all, uh, I use curves only for contrast, for... Uh, for highlights and you know because it serves as a contrast adjustment okay for yep. curves yep yep but for me levels are for depth for depth it serves uh, yep uh it serves as a you know as a blending tool for me okay as you can see here yeah as of the moment i've been playing uh, levels uh so before the would... output levels there yes so uh, it will make the scene like it is blended. So, um, so you use the the curves for the did you say the contrast? Yep. And then the levels for depth for creating the the depth of field where the background dissipates and gets lighter, yep. uh, as opposed to being stark um, high contrast in the foreground. It is. It is. It is just my preference. Ah, okay. So, yeah, that's interesting. I'm ashamed to say that I hardly ever use curves, even though curves are the best for most things. I've just been <laughs> such an old fuddy duddy, stuck in my ways for years using levels. But since I've been working on this channel and I see how you guys work, I'm like that. Oh, okay. I'm gonna steal that trick. I'm gonna steal that trick. <laughs> um, can I just jump in one. really quickly? I see you've got a fancy brush here. Um, is this one of the built-in brushes on Photoshop, or is this a download? What what's going on right here? Oh, uh, actually, this brush that I that I use on that uh, on that scene, uh, I think I got it from a uh, from an artist that I that I found all all over the. Net. Okay, was this like a free download pack or something? Like, can the the viewers watching today get this brush pack? I think I think so. Yes, because he offered that brush as free uh, for for his fans, including oh, okay. me. So well, I think it's a great opportunity to try one of the uh, one of his brushes. Okay. So, yeah. Um. If if we can sort that out after the video, I'll put a link to that um, brush download pack because that looks like I'm going to be experimenting more with uh, brushes this year. I was quite boring with brushes as well. Pretty much using <laughs> the soft edge brush for nine yeah. out of ten tasks. So I'm nowhere near as fancy yeah. as some of the other guys on the channel. Actually, me too. I never use uh, specialized brushes oh, wow. I, until I until I think two months ago or last month because I usually do hard brushes and round br uh, uh, soft brushes all over the time. Um, I'm noticing some tilt control on the brush here. So I'm assuming you're using um, a graphics tablet of some kind. Yeah. Uh, I've been I've been using Wacom, Wacom okay. Cintiq. Um, and for uh, the yeah. audience, uh, for anyone that doesn't know, that's where the Wacom Cintiq is, is where you're kind of drawing directly onto a screen, yeah. Yep, it is. Why is that better than a traditional 
tablet where you look at the screen and then draw onto the tablet. I, I know it may seem obvious, but some people may want to know. How, how has it improved your workflow? Well, actually, in, uh, it improved me a lot in terms of uh, efficiency. Yep. And actually, it improved my skill as well. Because when way back, I've been using mouse only. Yeah, I'm, only I'm mouse. still in that camp. I'm still in the only mouse camp. Here's a funny story for you. I brought a Cintiq two years ago, and it's still in the box. I've never used it, Christian. <laughs> How mad oh is God. that? Because uh, I'm for a big portion of my career, like you, I'm a book cover artist. And where I've got so used to using a mouse for so many years... I've got to keep that income coming in and I didn't want to take the time to learn the new tool. And I've just carried on going as I did before. But this year is different because I'm focusing more on artistic YouTube content. So I'm going to be getting that Cintiq out this year and experimenting and playing it and incorporating it into my workflow too. Man, I think you should, bro. Yeah, yeah. I, I, re I really feel like I'm being left behind now. Like seeing the stuff you guys are doing, I'm like that. Wow. No, it's not too late. I think you should you should use it uh, ass up. <laughs> yeah, um, you'll enjoy it virtually. You'll enjoy here's it. Here's the sure. funny thing: prior to being a photo manipulation artist, I was a natural media artist. I was an illustrator. I used to draw, and then because most of my success came from photo compositing that I've, I've kind of stuck with that and and didn't look back but i would like to go back to be a more hands-on and tactile and have a more natural media approach you know i really like what you've done here with this swamp land so those puddles weren't there before and I, I could just see you using the layer mask there using one of your um chalk brushes to incrementally let me just see what what's the flow do you use flow or opacity for your brush uh for that kind of oh look there you uh, go flow 60 percent yep uh on the screen uh i usually set the flow for uh about 60 i think it's the middle ground for me okay uh i think it's kind of complicated too as well for the wacom user because it's it, it also depends on how you you touch the screen using the, the pen the pressure it's all about the pressure yeah the pressure yeah. sensitivity i get you um can you explain to the audience why you use flow instead of op opacity uh it, it is a kind of complicated because uh it's all about preference for me because flow for yep. me this is just uh based from the experience flow is just for uh something that something to do with the pressure thing opacity okay. is for blending ah the i see blending brush I've, I've only just started using the flow control uh within the past six months and i'm, I'm gonna sound so old-fashioned on this um <laughs> this kind of narrated video but um I've, I've watched clinton lofthouse workflow one of the other guys on the pm team and i noticed he was He's using flow thing. all the time and i sent him a message and i said can you tell me why you use flow instead of opacity and he said something similar to you that is is just a a bit more control um but yeah yeah watching you guys work i'm i'm just absorbing all of your tricks now <laughs> so this is the it's foreground amazing. this is the foreground puddles all right yep. oh another haunted house what are you gonna do with this i'm gonna i'm gonna put yeah as you can see here on the screen uh, I put an air. I put the one area from from the yeah from this picture to the house right now to the one okay. we have right now. So you wanted yeah. to increase the detail level of the base house, and I'm um, I'm assuming you're gonna be selectively masking this out. Yep, you're correct. Oh, I'm gonna yeah. um, uh, as you can see here. I I use mask so that. I can play with uh, erasing manually and how to blend it using the mask because it's easier than using eraser. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Non-destructive editing. You, you can go backwards, go forwards, tweak things at any time. And, yeah, and for, yeah, the, for this type of piece, which, which is a bit more painterly, it's less clinical and sharp. And I'm very guilty of where I exclusively work mainly with the pen tool, everything 
looks really clinical and really sharp but this has a fine art uh, quality to it it's a power-up mask <laughs> yeah it is cool um for the brush that you was using for that layer mask was that a bog standard brush or was you using that chalk brush again uh that was the standard brush uh, uh the round brush yep the soft edge so that the uh the blending will be yeah technically soft <laughs> and can you so explain it... sorry christian can you explain to the audience what's going on with these clipping masks why you use why you like to use clipping masks all right uh clipping mask for me is uh so whenever you have uh, a selection or an element that you don't want to mess with uh when you, you when you paint that it won't get into the edge so you know what i mean uh yeah, um, so anything that goes on on that mask is constrained restricted to um whatever's the layer below and the layers yep, mask that is as correct well. yeah thank I've, you yeah thank um, you for saving me again <laughs> no, it's okay um so yeah clipping masks i've started using them more i use clipping masks a lot for working with hair and keeping the hair elements within the the figure below um, but I've, I've been using but the reason why i don't like to use clipping masks loads is because i like to move a lot of layers up and down and if you move a layer between that clipping mask it knocks the clipping mask off so a lot it of the time gonna miss the layer. i i tend to use layer groups with a layer mask on uh, and then i can move layers up and down does that make sense oh man i just realized I just realized that I can do that also as well. <laughs> yeah, we're all learning today. We're all learning today, Christian. But um, yeah. but I have been using, since I've been watching and editing and uploading all, all your guys' videos, I've been kind of absorbing all of your little tricks. Um, things like starting to use flow in my own workflow for brushes, brush control, using clipping masks a lot more. Um, from this video I've, I've watched this previously i understand there's going to be some interesting stuff with color so i'm going to be asking a lot about your color processing techniques so what we what have we got going on here you're you're painting on a new layer and what is it is this adding haze or fuzz uh technically yeah this is for the blending techniques and this, this is for my blending style uh since uh, it has a lot of fog so I, I tried to paint on top of it that matches the the value of okay. the house that that will make it like it's on the scene it's uh it's on the background just not like just i paid this uh i pasted there okay because so this trying, is uh, uh, an atmos atmospheric foggy scene isn't it it is it is Okay, see, so, so that, you've got the um, swamp stuff going on there again, and then, okay, I'm, I yeah. think I see what's going on. Yeah, I'm trying to see what the, uh, what what works best. And and for this particular <laughs> time lapse, nothing's been edited. All of your kind of experiments, and you you know you've tried some things, and then you got rid of it, and then I think that's a better representation of the artist's workflow. Than having a polished tutorial that's everything's 100 percent clean and edited do you know what i mean on that yeah it is it's because, a lot of trial because, and errors because too. in your um a commercial artist that does a lot of work each week i've been a commercial artist for 20 years and the reality of creating a piece a personal piece or a piece for a client is it it doesn't come out perfect first go like the tutorials tell you you get things wrong you try something out it doesn't work you try a different stock image you try a different compositing method and, and i think it that's that's what's great about seeing these um unedited unfiltered time lapses i know some people are critical of time lapses but i i think they're really handy to see the true workflow of of how something is put together because it's not always perfect yeah. It is. It is. Uh, as you can see, a while ago, uh, I had a lot. Of, I had a lot of experimental uh, approach on this kind of on this scene. 
Yeah, I noticed you tried a few different things. You thought, ah, oh, that didn't work too well. I'm really, really liking how that chalk brush worked out for creating the foreground swampy elements. Yeah. That, that was really effective. Um, right, what have we got here? A bit of layer mask action going on. Same, same, uh, same style that I've been doing. Uh, the map painting, the, the masking. And as you can see here, the gradient map, uh, before yep. I forgot. Yep, this gradient map that I've used. Uh, this one for me is a mood changer. Okay. Uh, this one changes the mood of the scene. So, uh, for me, uh, when I think the, the artwork is almost done, I try to play with the gradient map. So that it will inspire me how how will it goes so if it if it's enough or it's something that so I you could... use the gradient map as and is that set to normal uh blend mode or do you ch do you change that to a specific blend mode uh i choose soft light for your gradient map okay most of the time the i time. see and um for the for the newbie audience members can you tell them how how you would create a gradient map in the first place? Uh, this is all, uh, you know, there's a lot of things uh, or ways that we can do yep. on Photoshop, what's, right? What's your favorite uh, way? Uh, for me, the gradient map, uh, as I said, this is a mood changer for me. Uh, this changes the colors. So um, whenever I pick the uh, gradient map, there's uh, tons of uh, colors, right? Yep. So it has... It has option that you can pick only two to three, something like that. Okay. Yep. So I, I hope it makes sense. But that makes for sense. Me, and I... and the screen had just answered my first question as well. I saw that you accessed your adjustment layers via the little option at the bottom of the layer stack. And that's yep. that's the same way that I do it as well, um, via the little circle adjustment layer because it's there. It's fast, isn't it? And I see, it is, it you is, see right. you've got your properties as a little pop-out box, whereas I normally have mine. So Because everybody's different. <laughs> Everyone's different. Um, my, if you've watched any of my videos, my workspace is very different to yours. Abby's got her layers on the left, which is just complete madness. Um, <laughs> sorcery. Uh, Redouan's is different. Clinton's is different. And as we say in all these videos... There's no right or wrong way to do these things. All that matters is the net result. And sometimes, you know, we get critical comments saying, oh, you're doing this wrong, or oh, that's faster. But, you know, we do what we do to create the results that we want. Some It may not be the fastest or most efficient way, but we, we figure it out in our, in our own methods and we get there. Um, but I think that all that matters is the net result of course you are a commercial artist so being fast is important because speed is is money isn't it it is and time is gold <laughs> and you got it right bro uh there's a lot of different ways uh of using photoshop as long as the product is good i think it's good to go it is what it is i think yeah, and, and I'm always amazed at how fast you put these composites together. Um, it's it's much faster than my workflow. Again, I'm a bit of a fool. I chose the the pen tool approach for it. The good thing is is that my work looks a bit different to everyone else's because I do it, but it does take ages. <laughs> you you can do you can do a really good piece in an hour. Mine takes two days. Yeah, as you, as, you, uh, as you said uh, a while ago, everyone is different, brother. Yeah. So you, 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 your work is a legendary, bro. Oh, thanks. You're too kind. Your check's in the post, mate. <laughs> 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 right. That is true, bro. That is, I've been looking at uh, your works uh, for, decades, for decades now. Yeah, I'm an I'm old goat. I'm I've still... been around the block, mate. <laughs> I'm still a fan, bro. You know that. <laughs> so we've got more haze and light coming through here. Um, I was watching your succubus video earlier as well, and I was really interested in the way that you've done the light beams. Uh, the light beams. Yeah, so... is, is that what's going on here? Or is this foreground haze to create the sense of depth? Yep. Uh, this one is for the depth only. So for the light beams, I think we're going to find out later because ah. I think I, I did that kind of technique. Yeah. So for now, 
what, what I did is the haze so that it will look more blended than than the earlier stages. So I think when if they move back or rewind the video, they will see the difference uh, before I added the haze. So it looks like it's dull. Okay. It's something that uh, it uh, some thing that it looks like very very Photoshop if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> like something. That... This is something. So I had. Yeah, go ahead, mate. So yeah, sorry. Uh, I had to do some haze to to cover up the 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 sharpness. The nut. Yes. Technically, yes. That's one of the reasons too. See, these are skills that I need to develop for my environmental work. Um, you're very, very good at it. So is uh, Redouan as well. And yeah, the, these are these are aspects of the game that I personally would like to really improve on. Um, so the videos have been helping me out. I'm, I'm one of those guys that has just never, ever watched Photoshop tutorials throughout my whole career. And I think I've done myself <laughs> a bit of a disservice. Because I'm seeing and discovering so many different new ways. I was, I was just so, um, there's a word, belligerent, which just means uh, uh, I'll do it my way and I don't care. <laughs> but um, oh I'm, I'm going to be experimenting so much more this year, especially with that Cintiq. So what are you telling me that you never watched a single tutorial on YouTube when you started on this, I, I can on this count, career? I can count the amount of tutorials that I've watched in my lifetime up until this point on one hand. Less than five. Oh, see, but man... It, it's it, stupid, um, isn't it? It makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but, you, you know, your work is still, you know, great, you know? Well, but, um... So, ha -ha. I'm hoping I can be like the, the baddie out of the TV series uh, Heroes. I think his name was Siler or something. And he yeah, absorbed all right. the other heroes' superpowers. <laughs> well, I'm going to do that with you guys. So I'm going to absorb all your Photoshop superpowers and become the ultimate master. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I am too. <laughs> because, man, this team is... I mean, it's, it's a great honor to be on the team. Oh, it's, it's great it's having great. you, man. But the, the good thing about it is, is everybody has a different approach. So a lot of great, great Photoshop channels out there run by really amazing people like Pixinperfect or Flern. They're brilliant. And I think they're, they're, you can't do any better when it comes to beginner or starter Photoshop training. Like I, I don't think you can do it better than those guys. But when it comes to advanced techniques, I think it's really beneficial to have not one person to learn from but five or six because there's five or six different ways of doing things and i believe that's what makes us special it is wrong because we have a uh, different kind of uh, yeah you're you, were, you are correct uh, approach style genre so i think it's a good variety because, for because the because like a mood board you can cherry pick the techniques from each artist that you want to steal maybe somebody would like to steal um the pencil madness from me they can steal the atmospheric skill sets from you. They could steal the photography and color grading prowess from Clinton. Like from each person in the team, someone can learn something different and new. And I don't think I've ever seen that done before. I know I didn't watch tutorials in the past, but I, I don't recall seeing that in my recent research. <laughs> I think this is effective, bro. I gathered all the all the designers the the, the specialized uh, the, the expendables they're, they're on... have you seen the expendables <laughs> oh yeah i yep. watch it <laughs> yep the expendables of photo manipulation right this looks really interesting what's going on here can you explain all right. what you're so, doing and how you're doing it so uh this one is what we talked about earlier the light beam right uh what i what i call the, this one is a color dodge are, are you familiar with color dodge? Yep, I'm familiar with color dodge. Yeah, uh, I usually uh, use it for uh, for my past works like fantasy. Yeah. Uh, most 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 likely for apocalyptic uh, genre. So this one actually for the whole for every genre. This works. This works for different kind of areas. So as you can see here, uh, it looks like the house or it, uh, ha has a light right yep it's because of the color dodge on top of it uh it's hard to explain it uh 
<laughs> because so you have more than one layer so you may have one layer that's co color dodge one that's hard light and you build up those layers to create that that rich glow yep. effect it is bro it is it is okay that's cool i like that's that the... i've seen um clinton loft house use this technique quite a lot as well it's very effective it is a great element to use on okay this on is interesting topic. um you've got overlay you've got um uh, a dark foreground color and then you switched it to white are you are you using an overlay layer to control the light and dark tones yep yep uh i usually use overlay for darkness for manually uh contrasting oh, so okay. if i want some if i want the area to be more uh highlighted or i want it to be more shadowed yep. i use uh overlay so as you can see here uh some specific areas only Ab abby so... esparza does this as well this is a technique of of decided to steal off her like i said i'm just gonna steal everything of all you guys <laughs> that is totally i, okay I just i me. just feel so old-fashioned now man watching all these techniques Ah, oh, cloudy. What's so, going on? What we're gonna get some cloud action? Yes, bro. Uh, it, it is one of the brushes, uh, uh, including one of the brushes that that I found. Okay, from we've the really, really got to. Link. I hope you can find this so I can put it in the description because this looks really cool. Yes. I will look on it and and uh, and also offer this one to the to the world. <laughs> oh wow! Look at that. So it it looks like it's kind of randomizing the the clouds a bit as well yep it's one of the special brushes that this artist made so i'm looking forward in the future that i'll be doing this kind of thing as well oh uh, are you are you talking about um a product that you're going to be having coming out on photomanipulation.com yes i'm getting ready on it uh, so... okay so tell us what's it what's it called what's it about uh i've been thinking a lot of time that i should be offering a or maybe a product that will help the the artists or the the newbie ones. Okay. That, yeah, that's a good shout. That help me. Uh, that help me to to be on where I am right now. So I think these products will help them to improve their skills. Okay. So uh, what, what would that be? Like uh, brushes or overlays? What what kind of stuff would it have in it? I think I will focus on brushes for now and then see where it goes so okay, maybe okay. like and uh, so from my understanding you're most well known for urban fantasy work uh, would it be related to urban fantasy because i know that's like your uh, most popular stuff it is bro it is uh it may be for urban fantasy uh something that works with other genders as well okay. because you know if i if i made a product of a uh, of brushes that included the uh, includes clouds so i think that one works with other genres as well like this one for the handed house you, uh, yeah because i do here. you're you're quite like me you have certain go-to techniques that you use over and over and over again to refine your style and to have that branding if somebody is scrolling down on the timeline they see your work they know it's your work because it has that signature feel to it <laughs> yeah so they'll get uh the style also as well uh from me okay from so the product that I i'm think. just gonna jump in quickly christian if for you guys watching and you're watching this in the future um take a look at the description uh christian's kind of urban fantasy starter bundle uh, will be linked below if that's available so if you're interested in getting the brushes and the tools that christian uses day to day um have a look in the description that might be available it might not but it's worth a look. Um, what I want to ask is, uh, so you got a layer group there, seventy-five percent. It's a moon. How how did you do this? Uh, for the moon, I, uh, I painted it manually. Okay. So I think uh, I forget what I did here. But I think in the group, inside the group, uh, it has a lot of, uh, you know, uh, the the lighting, the lighting layer, and the yep. smoke so the opacity works for the blending so on how i want it to be more being shown or less i see so from 
from the scene itself that that moon is obscured by lots of dense kind of fog so it won't be a crystal clear crisp moon it, it, it yeah. would be uh, fuzzy and obscured like that cool yeah, photo filter you don't see that every day oh yeah it's a bit photo of an obscure filter, one uh photo filter is a direct to the point uh color changing effect okay as you can see gradient map has different options like yep. if you want to add uh, or want to combine two different colors so i choose photo filter uh as a wrapping up style or something like that yeah like, more, more of my, uh, my... as i say in my videos a quick and dirty quick yeah and dirty it, is, it is if you want something fast <laughs> just go for the quick and dirty option it is right i'm just gonna it check this time here i think we're coming up to the final bit um so this is a new format guys do let us know in the comments how you got on with this okay thanks for that christian appreciate you uh, coming online today and talking us through this piece thank you so much brother i i hope i made sense on some other part <laughs> perfect sense you were brilliant mate i look forward to the next one all right brother thank you so much so that's it guys i really appreciate you tuning in today and if you haven't already please do like and subscribe we're a brand new channel so we're really grateful for all the support and love shown so far lots more crazy tutorials rolling in from me and the team monday to friday so you definitely don't want to miss out on that big thanks pm crew i'll catch you at the next video see you then